Catch a jump. Eddie Pendergrass was popping, people. Facts. Damn, pin comic. There we go. Now we can get back to this audience. <laughs> what up, what up? We got a lot to get to today. I also be um oh, I also got to give my review of the new personas monitors I got. That's right. Did they yeah. come in uh did they come at one time or did they come in two separate packages? Fortunately, they all came at one. <laughs> they both came at one time. Yeah, yeah. So man, who we got in the chat, man? Who we got in the chat? We got Young Hood Beats. We'll yeah, see. Yeah. We got uh, Ace Maxwell, we got who we got? Quintendo was in here. Quintendo, my brother, was popping. Man, let's get into it. I'm just going to hit the theme song there. You are now watching the unquantized podcast. Yeah. Tune on Instagram and YouTube to build Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What up? What up? What up? Well, I go on my youths. Hold on, man. His chest a little bit bigger so I can read. I feel like this is a sign of me getting old. Oh, you got you got big up big up the chats. <laughs> big up the phone. You, know how, you ever see somebody old phone and that shit look like it's like three words per screen? You like bro. <laughs> Hood B said y'all brush y'all tongues today. Sure did. Thanks for the concern. Yes, yes sir. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. So listen, man, how was your week? Uh, it was cool, man. My uh, daughter's third birthday was yesterday. So I uh, just been kicking it with her, trying to, you know, turn it up for the 9-9. You know what I mean? All the juice and all the uh, snacks, you know what I mean? Mad fruit snacks going around. Facts, facts, facts. And, uh, you know, a little planning, trying to figure out how we could finesse this live show, how we could pull it off, how, you know. So a little, little, you know, digging into that and... That's been about it, bro. What about you? Definitely fired, man. I've been getting to the sound design, getting ready to come out with some crazy products. We got a new course coming out. Uh, but most importantly, man, I've been checking these stats on the um, Ben Trapping 5. Listen, man, shout out to y'all. That's going crazy. Ben Trapping 5, going crazy. If you don't have it yet, man, get it. Producers are loving it. Did you see what uh, Andrew Hypes did? Bro, he snapped on that, Jerry. I was like, okay, that's what I'm talking about. Him and Trizzy got my favorite videos right now. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, been yeah, a, yeah. it's been a quite a few. Yeah, man, dope, dope, dope. I see uh, y'all doing a good job out there. Some real info to people. Appreciate you, bro. Appreciate I appreciate you. Appreciate it. Yeah, appreciate you. But um, yeah, I'm man. So huh? <laughs> try to reach this gonna be a rough weekend. He said, uh, "Talk to Tim about being more a coach, like and less Donald Trumpish on his Twitch." Hey man, Tim is a grown ass man. <laughs> that's a fact. And that's, that's his Twitch channel. Tim do what he want to do. Hey, listen, I got nothing to do with what Tim doing on his Twitch. <laughs> what kind of that's like yo, somebody be like, yo, go talk to Oracle Trizza. Yeah, all right. Tell him stop talking uh trash on, on Instagram Live. Man, you can try. All right, but yo, so real quick, it's some some serious topics out there. The Tracy Chapman. Nicki Minaj and I didn't really have that first to go over but that joint is so wild yeah I think we should kind of talk about that that was my um god why do I keep forgetting the segment bro oh I man it's up. uh offbeat and that's in the my pocket. Off, that was my offbeat is the Tracy Chapman Nicki Minaj thing I have to agree with you so can you catch uh people up on exactly what's happening so it's a Nicki Minaj record. Is it with Nas, I believe? Yeah. So it's a Nicki Minaj Nas record. And Funkmaster Flex plays it. And it's like a leak. And uh, it contains a, a sample from Tracy Chapman. So if y'all don't know, it's certain people that you just can't sample. They will not clear it. It's not going down. And she's Tracy one Chapman, of Chapman, Anita Baker. That's French right. Was one. I feel like somebody did sample Anita and she let it let it slide, but it's rare. It's one of them joints where it's like, all right, well, I'm about to I'm about to nerd out on you real quick. I know a lot of people when I say that they say um, Bone Thug and Harmony first of the month. Actually, that is a sample from Chapter Eight, which was a group Anita Baker was in before she went solo. So if anybody's thinking about that song, that technically doesn't count as an Anita Baker sample. But uh, what was it? Did Drake sample Sweet Love? Somebody sample Sweet Love. I'm pretty sure not too long ago. Somebody in this chat know. Somebody Yeah, know. I feel like it was a Drake joint, but that's one of the few versions of Anita Baker uh, record that I've heard that's actually been sampled and released. So 
Nikki is getting sued by Tracy Chapman because of this leak, which it, it could cause all kinds of issues because if you think about it, this isn't a commercial release record. You know what I mean? No it's, one made is, money off of this. And and it it was a leak that Funkmaster Flex just happened to, to play. And now they're catching lawsuits about it, which will mess it. If this goes through, you know how much stuff that would mess up? That, yeah. <laughs> that if a demo gets played and you catch a lawsuit over that sample, like that is going to be... Then I would really be afraid to sample. I wouldn't sample then. If that was the case... If that goes through, I wouldn't sample. <laughs> that, yeah, that's kind of wild. So I, I wonder, don't think it will. No, no, I don't think it'll go through either. Because I'm like, what are you suing me for? Mm-hmm. Like, you're not suing me for the money I made because I didn't make any money. Are you suing me just because I used a sample of yours and I didn't clear it? Well, I didn't clear right. it because the song never came out. And if someone leaked it, I feel like technically you can't sue me specifically. I'm not the one that leaked it. Exactly. Are you just shooting at me because I'm the biggest target, or you I think know what I'm saying? What it is. So I'm like, how can you sue? How can they sue Nicki Minaj specifically? Tracy said, "I got time today, cause that's a fact. Yesterday ain't got time, but today I got time, cause that is a fact. But yeah, it's just it should uh, fall on the one who played it, though. Mm-hmm. I would have to agree. I would have to agree with that. Uh, they'll sue the uh, lockdown ownership. I get it, but my thing is." If you're going to sue me, I should be the one guilty, not just the biggest right. name in the mix, you know, but and I agree. It's going to, it will cause all types of problems if this goes through. And it's, it's different because you remember when Mac Miller got sued because of the whole mixtape thing, you remember mm-hmm. that was like a, a big thing, oh, at yeah. least in that situation, he was making money from touring and like, so right. I could see them, it, even though it's still messed up and I don't think they should have sued him over that. I still can get, it's like, yo, you're creating these off of my work and then you're going touring and doing all this, but this is yeah, like, some literally, type of revenue. yeah, this is literally like a funk flex exclusive. <laughs> Bro, funk flex. I, I don't rock with flex. I'm sure he's a great dude, but mm. just after that Drake back to back situation, you remember that? What did he do? Flex has done a lot of shit over the years. What did he do so in the back to back joint? So Meek Mill's record was supposed to drop, and he hyped, bro. He hyped. He's like nine o'clock. We dropping it. I remember. Bro, that. Every, everybody was excited. Everybody's on the net, bro. They didn't play it till like eleven thirty that night, bro. And then that record was like not even that great. It was. I was like, and ever since then, I'm just like Flex, man. I'm not listening. <laughs> so you don't <laughs> rock with Flex off the strength that he made you wait for a bad song. Yeah, and it, he just hyped it so much, bro. And just like it was just so much drama with that. And I was like, bro, come on, dog. I'm. I'm cool, man. Drop that bomb. Turn the bomb off. How many times did you start the song over, you know? Oh, bro. That'd be the worst, dog. I'm like, bro, if you don't play this damn song at least one time, then run it back. <laughs> uh, somebody said, but it seemed like Tracy Chap always suing somebody. Um, Yeah, probably. And I can see that because Tracy Chapman's on that do not sample me list, but people still, over the years, keep trying to sample. We need do to you know what like the song post. was? The Tracy Chapman song was that they sued for? I ain't, I'm gonna keep it 100. I only really know like one or two of her songs. So if That's it ain't hard. that one or two, <laughs> yeah, if it ain't that one or two, I don't know it. It's uh, Sorry, which was a super popular reggae song when the reggae people covered it. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Exactly. Also covered by a few go go bands. I know exactly. <laughs> With people what that could not sing lead. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Makes sense for the Nicki Minaj play. It just messed up. That was like, of all the sampling lawsuits, I feel like that's the most like this is reckless, bro. Like, you know what I mean? It's, it's outrageous, it's, bro. It's like I get it. people need to get paid for their work and all this, but this one is like, bro, like when it comes to Nas and, and Nicki Minaj, it's like, bro, they had nothing to do with that. That's that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so uh Quintino says the way that AO and Keys and Frank C are, are doing it seems to be the correct way with with honor. Oh, yeah. But you got to think, too. Frank Ski is, in Atlanta, Frank Ski is like a legend, bro. Like, Baltimore on the too? radio. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy, because I I knew that Frank Ski did that record, but I don't associate Atlanta Frank Ski with Baltimore Frank Ski for some reason. It's until, like two different people. Yeah, because when I think of Atlanta Frank Ski, I think of older guy, radio personality, morning show, like, really clean cut, owns clubs. And then when I think of Baltimore Frank Ski, I think of Turned up, yeah, ratchet, you know what I mean? 
but you know, Frank Ski comes from the culture, man. Super cool guy. You know what I mean? So I, I feel like he gets it. Tracy Chapman, she is not with the <laughs> nah. she ain't with none of that. Nah. No. But uh okay. So we all know Monday is a holiday. It is National R and B Queens Day. I was gonna say what, what holiday? <sighs> Motherfucking Monica versus Brandy. <laughs> Bro, I got some arguments about this one. Why? Because you said that Brandy uh, was going to win and, and people that you talk to just aren't smart and they disagree Bro. with you? And don't, Monica got some jams. Don't get oh, it twisted. 100%. Monica got some shit. Oh, wait, real like, quick. Well, as we talk about this, put in the chat who you think is going to win. But people, I saw my my stories, right, of all these people had these charts of, like, songs, like, you know, if Brandy plays this, Monica going to play this. And one to me that's it's messed up because you don't know the order they're gonna play the songs. You could switch the order and it determines a whole different thing. So you know what I mean? Like right. having those predetermined this versus this, and then you pick. I'm like, oh, that's kind of weird anyway. But they had you remember the song Monica had called uh, "Ain't Nothing" with uh, "Naughty by Nature." No, it's right. It, it's like it's one of them songs that's in all these movies. But in the background, I'm pretty sure, like, if I heard like just one note of it, I'm like, yeah, oh, you yeah. you would know exactly what it is, bro. They said it was better than Full Moon, bro. I, and I've seen multiple people post that that song was better. Brandy Full Moon is one of the greatest songs. <laughs> like, I was ready to fight, dog. I was like, yo, I think a lot of people just want to battle it out. But to me, it's it's cut and dry. And this is no uh, disrespect to Monica. I even got two unreleased Monica songs and zero. Brandy songs, but Brandy got this one, bro. Yeah, like, vocally, Brandy different. Yeah, yeah. And people like to even match up. They got about the same amount of albums and the same amount of this. Impact. If we talking just superficial, surface level shit, Impact, who's the bigger artist and just the more impactful songs to the culture? I don't see how anybody could disagree that Brandy's going to take it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, All what, right, so what did Prentice say? Prentice said he got... Um, hold on now. Nah, he's talking about Frank Ski. He, hold on. Smoking said he Monica. got Monica. Yo, y'all tripping, dog. Smoking got Monica. Let's see. Uh, Brandy. Brand, well, somebody <laughs> got Brady. But um, Monica <laughs> Tom, by the Tom weave Brady. of a hood chick. <laughs> <laughs> Points. I like that. <laughs> that was a good way. Good way. Yeah. Uh Brandy song said different. Yeah, that's a fact. Yeah. Yeah, she has full moon. Monica has a certain dominance, but I'm gonna brandy though. Yeah, okay. I did, again, like Monica had a crazy run, but I feel like especially if you think about influence, Brandy's influence, like if I listen to Kalani. You can hear the Brandy influence. When you listen to all, bro, it's so many singers that you hear the influence of how Brandy sings. And then, yeah. like, backgrounds, how she stacks, bro. Like, it ain't many people that can do that, bro. Like, vocally, she is, like, on some some next level. You know what I mean? Facts. Yo, P. Floyd NY raises a good point. He says, Brandy had unique production as well. Mm. Yeah. Plus, she had a, um, has an abnormal but dope sound. Her production now monica also great production but brandy's production was a little more i'm not going to say iconic or better but a little more focused on than monica song when, when a monica song will come out it will be all about monica when a brandy song will come out it would be brandy and dog child or brandy and whoever mm. she was working with at the time and it was more like a team and to me that is that was the difference between bad boy artists and a lot of other R&B artists at the time. When you listen to a Bad Boy R&B artist at that time, you hear Bad Boy, you hear exactly. the Hitman, you hear everybody involved, and it's kind of like a bigger production than just the artist itself. And that's the difference between Brandy and Monica for me. It could have been the same thing going on in the background for both of them, but just mm -hmm. one, the story was presented a bit better and a bit bigger, which puts me on the Brandy train. And the songs were just bigger to me. Right. What? They should play the Moesha theme song. Because I ain't gonna front. That joint hit. <laughs> bro, that Moesha theme song. Oh, hit, they play bro. the Moesha theme song. I'm out. I am out. Bro, bro. I'm over here. 
You got to do all the little dances. <laughs> Bro, I'm out. They play that joint. I'm not even going to lie to you, man. I'm not even, I'm not even going to lie to you. So I can't wait. Monday, um, it's going to be it's going to be a, a vibe. Now, is this one that, d- did you order this one? Is this one that somebody ordered or is this another one that just came to us? Nobody ordered it, but we'll taste it. No, I think people ordered this one because, you know, the whole boy is mine, Brandy, like Monica beef kind of thing. I feel like people still carry that. And I, I think they tried to do it before and then they didn't want to do it because, you know, Monica was like, yeah, I've been dealing with this my whole life. I don't want to, yeah. you know, like hype it up, but. That's crazy that they had to go through that because of that song. Did, Mike, did Michael Jackson and Paul McCartney have to go through it when they <laughs> did The Girl Was Mine? That is, that is a good question. Yeah. But didn't they really beef too? I don't think so. Or, or I don't know that story. Hmm. Oh, you, you no, got I think, Well, I think I think they beefed later because the whole publishing thing. Oh, shit. Remember? I can see that. Probably had something to do with the Beatles catalog. Yeah. I can see that. Yeah. I, I, I'm excited about it, low-key, though. Just because, you know, it's just a different vibe. But I feel like it's going to be one of those ones where they're going to respect each other, but it's going to be that real competitive energy. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So, so I think it's going to be good, man. I just think people are sleeping on Brandy, man. I think Brandy got so many hits that when you hear him, you can be like, man, I forgot about this record. Yeah. The, well, I don't know if people are sleeping. People are like, yo, Brandy going to crush this one, bro. Bro, I, bro, on my timeline, I've seen so many people like, yo, Monica's about to, to wash. I don't think it's going to be like, no, Brandy's the clear coat. You know, it's like no, super no. bad, but I feel like it's going to be close, but I still think Brandy's going to. She gonna etch it out, you know what I mean? Yeah. Most of these joints don't ever be a watch, no matter how how much we we think it's gonna be a watch. Like these joints are rarely, rarely oh, yeah. a watch. We we probably only seen like one or two watches the on only, this joint. The only one that I thought was a watch, and I just thought it was a bad matchup, was the Scott Storch Manny Fresh. I didn't see that one. It, it wasn't a good matchup though. It wasn't. I just felt like Manny played so much weird stuff. Like he played a Scott Storch remix. The lean back New Orleans bounce remake. It was just a very weird like. He tried. He tried. Yeah, it, it, it was just the 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 playlist was just kind of weird. It, that was the only one I was like, eh. But I mean, to get to verses anyway, you oh, gotta have a certain catalog. Yeah, you gotta be a certain caliber, you know. Yeah, Great Keys uh, raised the point. Said people think that when we say Brandy hands down, that means we're dissing Monica, not so Monica. Yeah, hella dope. That's that's a fact. Like I said, no, no disrespect, Monica at all. She is definitely uh, one of the greats in this space, mm-hmm. but that's why it's them too, you know. Um, speaking of verses, real mm-hmm. quick, you know who's not gonna do a verses, John? Who? Nas. He said no. Nah. He said he's not doing it, bro. I mean, who, who besides Jay Z could you put him against? <laughs> That's the, it's it would not have to be people. somebody with like hood classics, not not hits, because Nas doesn't have hits. So it have to be like a classic legendary. Even though it would have been a a bad matchup stylistically, Snoop and Nas would have been all right, kind of. Well, no, no, I'm yeah. lying. Snoop got hits. Nas don't don't have no hits. I don't know, bro. <laughs> Oh, I know it sounds like I'm shitting on Nas again. I'm not. I'm not. I actually went. Bow, bow, bow. <laughs> no, I actually went back this week and I listened to the album again. Which number one, I gotta apologize because I said the album didn't have any replay value to me. Yet mm. I found myself listening to it two more times. So it had at least enough replay value for me to listen to it two more times. And as I listened to it, additionally, it sounded better to me each time. Yeah, so. it's not. It's not bad. Like I the production wise, I really enjoy where they went. Like uh, to me, Hit Boy did a great job of like, I'm gonna keep it modern and I'm still gonna keep it. Uh, to me, that's Hit Boy's sound too. It's like it's boom bappy, but it's still modern at the same time. Like he balances that very well, which is kind of hard to do. Oh, he's a beast with it. He's a super beast. A lot of times when you think of like the boom bappy kind of drums, they're like really big OD drums that kind of take up a lot of room. Mm-hmm. And um but I don't know. He, he's figured it out, like, to get that balance with the 808 and, and the bounce still there, but it still gives you that hip-hop feel. Yeah. Um, I don't know if I'm – it's not something I'm just going to be bumping on, you know, like, on the regular, but it's not bad. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. I'm – out of all the projects, I'm the most impressed with this one. <laughs> true, <laughs> true. Uh, 
True. Hey, I I, I like it. I'm kind of I'm kind of rocking with Nas on this one. I'm, I'm kind of rocking with him. I'm I don't have a cape on, but I am. I can't say he hasn't put out a good album in like a decade. I just can't say that anymore. So man, shout out to him and shout out to Hit Boy. Yeah, shout out to Hit Boy, bro. If we want to talk about producers, so okay, I saw you post something about uh, super producers and like how that era is like kind of gone, yeah. which I. I agree and then I disagree, right? Because mm-hmm. look at Hit Boy. Hit Boy is someone you have to applaud him because Hit Boy had a run with the Kanye era, right? And now he's, I, I feel like he's having another run because yeah. he took somebody who is known for picking very bad beats, right? And broke that stigma. Like, I feel like that was the biggest knock on Nas is everybody's like, yo, he picks bad beats, right? Yeah, definitely. Hit, definitely. Hit Boy. Hit Boy came and laced him like all the beats are like really good, and then he drops that Big Sean and Nipsey joint, which is crazy. Like I think he executive produced a Big Sean album that's about to come out. So yep. I feel like he, and he did Boy's, a Dom Kennedy album. Him and Dom really? Kennedy did an album. Yep, I missed that one. When did that come out? I think it just came out. Oh yeah, like I mean, not today, but like a week ago or some some something like that. Something came out. Yeah. Yeah. I, okay, I will say this, Hit Boy. As far as the super producer thing goes, I don't think he is recognized as a super producer. So pay attention to what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying he's not because I feel that he is. I just feel like it's one of those cases again where when the conversation is going on, there's certain people that should be mentioned that are not mentioned. Hit Boy over the last 10 years, if not more, has done more than 95% of the producers out there, but his name never comes up never comes up i don't know if that's because of not bad but like a lack of self-marketing because you're just like i'm just doing my thing i'm not gonna market myself i don't have time to tell everybody what i'm doing but i think he gets and has been getting overlooked for a long time people should have been saying about this about him when niggas in paris came out yeah that's around that whole time you know what i mean but i just think um i just think he don't he don't get his just due so i think he is a super producer but i think only producers regard him as a super producer you know what it is too is i was thinking about this when i saw that post too is that all the super producers that we like look up to like swiss you think about the neptunes tim they were on the records and they were in the videos and that was part of the the package like Mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like everybody that you 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 really looked up to they were always on the record somehow. And they were doing ad-libs like Beacox. He, he would be doing another Beacox joint. He'd be in the videos. You would see, yeah. you know, like JD, you would always see his cameos. And I feel like that it doesn't happen as much anymore. It's you not like what? that stamp anymore. Like uh, we see you and we're hearing your production. So it's like, we know who you are. And I think that kind of takes away. I think if we if producers were back in the videos and doing all that, then we would think of it differently. True. I think we might be boiling down to a common denominator because you named um uh you named like uh who who'd you just name? Damn, I'm having an off. Tim, Neptune, well, Swiss, Tim, Nept- okay. Fox, we can stop, we can stop right there. You said that they were always in the videos and all that good stuff. Now, if Hip Boy was in a lot more videos, how many people would know that that is the producer? And what I'm getting at is the common denominator between everybody else you named just about and Hit Boy is that those people had artists or a a clique that celebrated them and told everybody who they were. Like Missy would always rap about Tim or whoever would sing about Tim and and then always be with him in the video. Same with Swiss. You know, Mm -hmm. I mean, Swiss name was in hooks for Rough Riders. You know what I'm saying? And so then people knew, number one, who produced it, the number two, what he looked like, because as they say his name, he's in the video with them. Right. To my knowledge, Hit Boy didn't have that. So I think, and this is actually a topic that I have, building with an artist or getting with an artist can do a lot for you. And one of the things that I didn't even account for is that an artist can tell verbally about you. Whereas you as a producer, you almost never get a chance to vocally tell people, hey, this is me, hey, this is who I am. And they get to hear that on a song or in a video while they're enjoying it. So that's that's one reason to get with a a artist. The second reason 
to get with an artist, and I'm definitely jumping topics, is it it's the best way to me to get, if you have a sound, it's the best way to get your sound presented in a total package with as little mm -hmm. friction and interruption as possible. You know what That's I mean? Right. You can do six songs over the course of a year for different artists. And don't get me wrong, that has its own benefits. But if you have a project with one artist and you can diversify and do a whole bunch of different shit with them and then have them be so much on your team that they're telling people about you, I think that's right. how you get out there. And then the following year, that's how you get the, I'm producing for everybody in the industry. No, that makes sense. You know what I mean? You think Mustard, you know, he kind of broke through with like YG and, and all of them, Ty Dollar Sign, then like Metro and Future, you know, Sunny yeah. Digital and, and Future, that whole like, huh. yeah, bro. Not mad. I'm yeah, not mad the common denominator is having an artist or having a team that will tell people about you. So that way people know that you are a super producer and they right. know what you look like. Yeah, Nobody true. know what Head Boy look like. I definitely think that that is something that is not talked about enough is like, being that that produ like that top level producer you have to have some kind of branding like you have to treat it almost like being an artist like yeah there's so many people that that when i you if i say that tag you exactly you you know exactly who it is you know what i mean yeah. and i feel like we think that we could just sit behind a computer and just make beats all day and it's like no you have to like put yourself out there and market push your brand out there because if not, people aren't really going to take it, especially now that everybody has a producer that tag. So now yeah. it's like, all right, what's going to be the next thing to separate me, you know? Facts, facts. Duh, I, I have a, I have a confession to make, but first let's see what's in this, uh, let's see what's in this chat real quick. <laughs> Quintino said, <laughs> he said, you got to have a signature snare to be a <laughs> super producer. <laughs> <What's your> <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> He's the not boy wrong. may be on to something. <laughs> He's not, not wrong. He may not on something, but on to something. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. I was like, oh, that's a good one. That's that was true. a good one. That's it points. <laughs> you get points, Quentin, though. You you might be right. You you might be right. Another common denominator. Uh let's see. Artists used to respect producers more. Um so, yeah, probably. Yeah. The industry itself, though, used to respect producers less. I think the industry not so much respects producers more, but recognizes producers more uh, than they used to. So despite and, the fact that the artists may not. And I'm trying to think of how to put this because I don't want this to be a I'm bashing selling beats online. I don't want it to be the thing. Okay. Right. I, I, and I, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, as producers, we kind of got to be accountable, too, because we can't be out here just packaging whatever and selling it for the cheap. You know what I'm saying? Which I get like, hey, get your money however you can. But at certain points, you got to understand the value of your product and how to price it to that. And I feel like it's not much conversation of like, all right, I'm in a better situation. Let me change my prices a little. Let me adjust because then it's like no one's talking about pricing. Yeah, if everything is dirt cheap, then I feel like it kind of it messes up like DJing, for example, right? If mm -hmm. you DJ in the clubs, bro, at one point a opener would get like five hundred dollars, and that was like the standard. But then everybody start undercutting and undercutting. Now, bro, you'd be lucky to get a hundred, hundred fifty for opening up. You get what I'm saying? Because everybody's undercutting, so the value is so messed up of what what that is. It, you know, even if you're great, it's still gonna be hard to get that 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 price that you want. And I feel like yeah, we could be mad at the club promoters, but at the same point, it's kind of our fault too. You know what I mean? We got to kind of take some accountability for what was going on and making it a situation. Hey, so Thank you, babe. You're welcome. Oh, it's pulled up. Bartender, what up? <laughs> <laughs> Trisha said, bartender, what up? Hey. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I don't want it to be like, I'm slandering, selling beats online, get your money. You know what I mean? Go and get your money, little duffel bag boys. But, <laughs> you know. At the same time, if we want artists to respect and you know put some put some respect on the name, we gotta you know at least start charging according to what's going on. You know, start somewhere, but when stuff starts going up, you gotta raise them prices and you gotta you know adjust and and not be afraid to lose money. You know, sometimes when you adjust prices, people gonna fall off. Damn, somebody had a really good conversation about. It. I feel like it was AJ. Do you remember that. this? That sounds like an AJ conversation. I feel like he was talking about, and this was years ago, and I, so I'm probably messing it up, but mm -hmm. I feel like he was talking about how, and I, I hope I ain't putting his business out there, but he was talking about how 
his mixes were better than where he what he was charging. And oh yeah, when he raised his prices, that he felt like people was gonna fall off. But then the people who stayed respected it. And then he oh, gained yeah. different clients. It put him in a different room by changing his prices. And that conversation really stuck out with me. That I was like, "Hey, that's a, that's a very good point." Of you have to kind of adapt at some some point. So, yeah, you know. So to think about real quick. And I'm asking you, and I'm asking everybody in here. Who do you think is doing the undercutting for producer? What type of producer is doing the undercutting? You know, does that question make sense? Yeah, 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 no. You know what it is? I think it's because. Okay, I'm trying to. I don't nope, want nope. it to sound like I'm dissing. I just don't want people to think that I'm like dissing when that's not my intention. A lot of in this production world, it's like a herd mentality. Like, it, at the beginning, I was very vocal about tight beats to me was weird, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's like, why am I copying somebody else's sound when the goal is to you know make my own sound right so everybody follows so i think when people see one person be successful about this price point then everybody else is trying to copy and then instead of understanding what an offer is and instead of like oh i'm gonna make this what they're selling better what they do is i'm gonna undercut which is an offer at, at, at a, you know at a, in a way it's an offer but you got to understand it's other ways to make offers to people you don't always have to undercut you could just make your you could bundle your product with something. You could do other stuff to make it more valuable. So you could charge more, you could charge the same, but get different results. And I think that's where it messed up at is that everybody just saw like, oh, well, this person is selling leases for 50 and they're making all this money. So I'm gonna sell this for this price, but not understanding this person probably got years and years of business, you know what I mean? And trial and error. And that's why it's working for them and not really trying stuff for themselves. That's a fact. I'm going to go out on the ledge here and I'm going to say it's a lot of times it's the producer that just started or he's been rocking at it for like a year or two. Can't seem to like, you know, get a lot of sales or, or get any sales or anything like that. And like you said, instead of trying different strategic methods, I feel like the low hanging fruit and the lazy thing to do is to just undercut everybody. You know what I'm saying? Like, instead of being like, oh, let me try a different type of bundle. Um, you know, let me try some different platforms. Let me try to build with, with, with a different network. People are like, yo, just let me undercut. So if I'm looking at the landscape and there's a whole bunch of undercutters already in the landscape and I'm that guy, I'm trying to now undercut the undercutters. Right. So homie got a hundred beats for $10. So when I'm doing a hundred beats for $5. It and the reason not to cut you, not, not to cut you off, but the reason why I think it might be the person that's been doing this for a little while and just not seeing uh, sales like that is because you have little to no regard for the actual uh, the actual ecosystem of mm. the producer artist relationship money flow situation. Right. You don't see how you're killing the whole shit by undercutting the people that already undercut, and you're not building any value for yourself. You're just shooting more with these whack ass numbers and looking crazy. Right. So saying all that to say, I, I and I, I imagine it's an assortment of different types of producers, but in my mind, a lot of them are just people who've been doing it for a short amount, a shorter amount of time than most people and just haven't seen any results and don't want to be strategic about it. And that's why I think like, I mean, part of the reason why we started the podcast is because we wanted to like explain stuff that we didn't actually understand starting off. And I think that a big thing that people think is, yo, you start today and you can make all this money. Like it's certain people, it's certain people who catch it and they just get the wave and it's instant, right? What Plus percentage five, would you say that is? Bro, probably like two, <laughs> two percent. But Fact. everybody else, it's a hustle, bro. And it's a long-term thing. You know what I mean? Like I got a placement and I got a big placement at the beginning. And then I didn't have another one for like a year, a year and a half. And I was every day in the studio, like running around, like, and, and so after that, I was like, oh, I gotta be smarter about this. Like, what am I missing? And mm -hmm. and I think the key is, is Timbaland isn't charging whatever he charges for a beat, just for the beat. It's the brand, it's his knowledge of like- oh, it's what oh, it could do for you. Yeah. yeah it, it's all, it's like his knowledge of like, yo, you should approach the record like that. It's 
the beat is going to be fire. Then it's going to be, oh, my brand is Timberland. And that's what I'm charging all of this for. So I think if producers start looking at it like, okay, other than, you know, this one thing that I'm selling, what else do people get from it and start building that value up? Then I feel like it's going to start making more sense. And like, that's why I never sold, bro, we have this discussion and I've had opportunities <laughs> to sell beats online. Bro, right. I hate when, when I would sell beats online and rappers would be like, oh, Trizza executive produced my project. He worked with this person, this person, and this person. And I never talked to this person. The only thing they right. did is they bought three beats. Least, least the beat and shit. Yeah, they leased three beats for like $40 online. And then all of a sudden I'm executive producing and and they try to cap on. And I, bro, it would tear me up, dog. I would hate it, bro. Like it would irk the shit out of me, dog. And I know I shouldn't think like that, but these are my babies. You know what I mean? This is my brand. So you rapping this horrible and then saying I'm executive producing it to me puts me in a bad light. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So oh, it's that's like, a fact. Yeah, you you fucking on my brand at this point. Yeah, so it's like you have, it's, and I'm not saying don't sell beats online. Like I get it, especially if you know, you know what I mean. Like if you if you're in a small town or you somewhere, like I get it. Especially now with what's going on, it ain't the studio pull ups no more. It ain't like I mean, it still is. Don't <laughs> let me not say it ain't no Unfortunately, more. Unfortunately, yeah, it's still a lot of that. People going still on. in the studio, but I'm not going in the studio. But so I get the importance of being online. But I feel like it's got to be a different approach that people could do. And I think a lot of it is just people didn't know there was an option. I, I, I think people didn't know it's other options. Like when Legion Beats came in, I applaud him because he took what everybody was doing and he just changed it. And everybody goes crazy because they've never seen that before. You right? know what's crazy? It, and this is something that you know and I know. What he did was actually commonplace in other industries outside mm -hmm. of this and, and we know that because we know some of the same people that he may have mm -hmm. studied or whatever but you're right he came in and applied <laughs> that method uh to this and it uh it really it really changed everything uh well here's an interesting point hood beats brings up he says these advertisements about making it as a producer are poison to the unlearned <sighs> to a to <clears throat> a point it's not the advertisements or the the tone or what they're talking about. A lot of times it's the person behind yeah. the advertisement. And I'm going to have to, so we've seen a, 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 the homie Bricks on a little mission recently. <laughs> yeah, he's been going crazy. He, he been, I ain't going to lie, he's been OD and, and um, extreme, but he raises, he raises a very valid point. He's like a lot of people out here following advice from people who have never had a placement who have never been in a major studio ever. And I do think, not saying that people who haven't had a place or haven't been in a major studio may not have the talent or whatever you need, mm -hmm. but it is something to consider. Right. So that ties into uh, what Hood Beat said, because a lot, I'm seeing a lot more ads that are uh, focused on that or mm -hmm. geared towards that whole type of thing. And then I'm looking at the people and I'm like, you've never done anything in your life. Not saying that you don't have the talent, right? but it would go a long way. It has to be some type of checks and balances because now you're going to see somebody who started yesterday mm -hmm. is going to jump out there a month from now and be like, follow my tried and true method <laughs> to get placements. And it's like, Slim, you never got a placement in your right. life. Right. Who have you worked with? Exactly. Now I'm starting to see a lot of ads from people like that. And I'm yeah. like, okay, see, now it's getting fucked up because the people that I was seeing it from before, I knew them, I knew their pedigree, I knew what they did, but now it's a mm. lot of people just kind of jumping out there and I kind of know yeah. their pedigree too. And I'm like, I see mm. I see where this is going. Y'all should just chill out. It has to be some type of accountability and it's a lot of, a lot of capping going on. Especially with courses. First is like- Cap war learning... stories, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> you know, that's, that's a good one. Like learning stuff online, I feel like it's like a, it's a bunch of levels to it. So you, one, you got to trust the teacher of whoever's teaching the stuff, right? Because mm -hmm. if it's a bad course, it's a bad course. You're not going to learn anything. But then it's the other part of, and you know this from selling courses, bro, half the time people never finish the course and then exp and be mad that they didn't get the result. And it's like, bro, you didn't do it. You don't do Gosh. the work. So you, you got have chapter to be, five, dog. yeah. So it, I mean, it is people who teach good information and, and out there really trying to help. Like, you know what I mean? So, if you get information for them, 
you just got to make sure that you're you're listening you're taking notes you and you're doing the steps that they're saying and you can't be mad at them for you know what i mean <laughs> it not working and then right. at the same time you got to understand that every situation is slightly different so it might take you two or three people's story and 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 you know observations and putting them together to be like oh this is this is what worked for me and i feel like that's like i me and oracle run pretty much the same business right mm -hmm. almost i you know what i mean same situation we both do the podcast together but i think we get far because it's like i'll try one thing he'll try one thing and then i'd be like yeah that didn't work for me and then i try something else yeah you need so a partner in crime man you need yeah, we get all this test data so quick because we're trying different stuff and be like yo you should try this and we always just come back and like yo you try this maybe this will help you yeah. and i feel like both of us got a lot farther like I, man i wouldn't have got nowhere close <laughs> to where i've gotten without having oracle being there to like help me guide certain stuff and i feel like you know likewise, like i've been able likewise. to throw him info yeah so you know likewise. you just got to be careful about who you get information from and That's then true. if you, if it is good information make sure you applying it to the best of your ability and don't get mad if it don't work on the first go <laughs> you know what i mean Super good point. Yeah, definitely don't get mad if it don't work on the on the first try. Uh, Hub Beats raises another good point. He says, I'm still coming back to unquantized because the knowledge checks out. And that is true. Appreciate and that's I was going to say, qualify your sources. Mm -hmm. Because it's only going to increase that you're going to start seeing more ads from people, um, you know, promising results for this or promising mm -hmm. results for that. And after a while, it's going to get a little bit confusing. Yeah. Just qualify your sources. That's it. Yeah. What, without saying it, or you'll know what I'm talking about, but I I, I stumbled across something saying that I hate him. A, pro, a like product that. was a scam, right? You know what I'm talking about. Remember I, I exactly sent you what that? Talking about. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. And to me, it was wild because I could tell that they didn't really put the effort all the way in because I, I know personally, I've taken some of those same steps and I've done it and it's worked very well for me. Like mm -hmm. very, one of the best things that I've done in 2020 was changing <laughs> this steps. Right. And it worked well. So I think, I mean, of course I'm applying it to a different business, but the, the concept. Well, I still, think the difference between you and that person might be that you're applying it, period. Oh yeah. And I'm shooting, bro, with this online stuff, I'm shooting shots, dog. Like even it, like I, I realized with Facebook ads and it told me a lot is that you can't be afraid to lose. You just got to be smart about how you, how much you do lose, Perfect. but you, you're not going to know until you lose some, you, until you test and you, you're going to lose, you know what I mean? But then when you catch it, you on, and it's the same thing with like business and anything you have to test. You got to just make a uh, like responsible risk. Yeah. And then once you catch one, you in there. Facts. Good Big point. Facts. Uh, Smoke Dog Five Sixteen says, "What advice do you have for new coming uh, producers? Cut the line, bro. As much as you can, cut the line. If you could find a mentor or pe people that just have been, maybe they haven't been all the way where you're going, but at least they've been to a part of the journey that you have yet to hit. Mm -hmm. Get with them." See what you can find out from them. See what advice you can get from them. That's another thing too. A lot of people look for advice and from mentors, uh, from people that have gone to the exact goal that you want. And there's nothing wrong with that. You should still seek those people out, but you have a next step and a step after that that's far from your goal. And there are far more people that have covered those steps successfully than there may be people that have reached the goal totally. So right. I just, I just want to say like, don't, sell yourself short because the people that may not have reached that goal totally but just reached the next few steps that you got to go to a lot of those people are easier to get to you know what i mean they're more right. approachable they're more willing mm -hmm. to help you so if you're a new and upcoming producer man just find ways to to cut the line i mean you can sit all day and watch youtube tutorials and while that is a big help because when i started there were no youtube tutorials and all that mm -hmm. shit. but find people that you can get with it's people in this community if you're new 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 like that there are people in here that may be kind of new but they're not as new as you and they can help you right. out uh with certain things so just be mindful of your next couple of steps mm -hmm. and be mindful of the people that you're in close proximity or at least a few degrees of separation from and try to get with them and get that knowledge because the issue with youtube is is that the accountability is only on one side yes it's like you know what i'm saying like if you watch the video and don't do anything about it it's kind of like, uh, but if you actually networking with people, right, I, I find myself that I work better when 
If someone calls me and say, yo, I need this, I'm going to, I'm going to perform well because I feel like it's a pressure for me to like deliver certain stuff. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I mm-hmm. feel like I need to like prove a point of, I need to do something, do well in this. But if it's just like, I watch a video and somebody tells me to do something, it's kind of like, eh, I might do it. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, if yeah, I feel like, that's it, a yeah, maybe. Like, but if that that other person's on the other end, I feel like, all right, cool. I got to turn up. Like, I got to do something. Like, I'm not going to be out here looking crazy. So it's it's a difference. That's why I always tell people online is great, but pull up on people, man. And I know the whole Rona season. Well, I was about to say the pull up's a little, a little yeah, different. But, you, but pick up the phone. You know what I mean? Like, yo, know, texting is cool, but pick up the phone, man. Like, call people like old fashioned. You know what I mean? Like, network with people. Like, that that makes a big difference. I agree. I do respect the old school phone call. Mm-hmm. Uh, damn technology. I love technology as much as the next person, but nothing gets your point across and nothing gets to the bottom of shit faster than a phone conversation. Mm-hmm. I can say something. You can say something. We could do that a couple of times back and forth over the span of 30 to 60 seconds. And you see my point. I see your point over emails and all that, that, that may take a whole day of just back and forth and, and all that. So don't underestimate the the power of an old school call. And I will say this too, when you hook up with somebody uh, uh, to get information or to build with them for the first time, try to call them. If they're cool with that, that's dope. Call them exactly at the time you're supposed to talk. Anybody out here who's done a consultation with me or a phone call or anything with me knows that when the clock turns to whatever time it is, that is exactly when your phone is going to ring for me. And seven times out of 10, people are like, damn, you called at 12 on the dot. Or you called at one right. right on the dot. That sets a standard mm, to you know show them up. the type of person that you are and how serious you are. And it sets a standard of professionalism. Now, if this is the first time you talk to a person, just the fact that you called them right when the clock flipped over to that time, they're going to know right. you're, a little, you're a little different or you you might be a little more serious in this mm-hmm. informal industry. So that's just a tip, man, for me, like call 12 o'clock, hit them at 12 onions. Exactly. And bro, I'm telling you, even the online, the people that you think are online people, they have that I'll pull up on you trade, bro. Mm-hmm. We know busy from online, right? Facts. I've probably, I've probably been around busy. 15 times now Bro, <laughs> in real life. <laughs> Busy pulled up on me literally. Oh yeah, I in, forgot about in, that. <laughs> in Philly, I was in Philly judging a beat mm-hmm. battle. I'm outside the club and I didn't know Busy and he walked up on me. Mm-hmm. Like, nah, I came here to, I came here yeah. to meet you. Or, Cap you know. son. Yeah, yep, Cap. <laughs> Cap, Decap. Busy, Cap. Yeah. Like all of those people have that, like, yo, we're going to network online and do our business online, but we'll still pull up. Yeah. And I feel like that's how, that's probably a big part of why they're so successful is because they get that. All right. This is the broad audience, but you know, too, I also, if I got to go shake some hands and like politic, cool. I'm doing that too. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yes. So, you know, just don't, it's, I, I'm getting more into investments and like, you know, trying to be more fiscally responsible and i you know i realized that you gotta you gotta diversify your portfolio you can't put everything in one thing you know what i mean Don't and uh fiscally and diversify okay i hope i said that right too no you killed it you killed it you did it, you did it. <laughs> but same thing with online like you can't put everything into online you know what i mean like you could put a majority and that could be your your wheelhouse but you know politic man call some people that's a fact that's a fact you you get you develop a better relationship that way. Okay. A lot of people are afraid to um, to speak to people, especially if you feel like it's somebody who's accomplished what you're trying to accomplish. Mm-hmm. But I guarantee you, you will get further by doing that. So, uh, in the chat, Ponzu. No, I, I met Ponzu online. Ponzu will call me like, yo, bro, like, what's up? And we just, just chop it up. So I feel like I've known this man mm-hmm. for a while just because we just chop it up. You know what I mean? It's, it, it's, it puts a difference in it just rather than somebody that I only know through Instagram. Facts. Facts. Shout out to Ponzu as well, man. Hey, he, to Hummy, man. He's a dope dude. He's a dope dude. So wait, I had an I had another topic. Oh I, did, I didn't expect this to go on that on this on this tangent. No, that was good. <laughs> that was a good tangent. Okay, we we we, we got about uh eight eight or nine minutes left. Mm. 
So I posted, um, we, we did a tutorial, Realistic and I did a tutorial about a week ago, two weeks ago. It's about pitching and tuning your drums. And I was surprised at the amount of people that said, um, it doesn't matter. Dr your drums really don't have any pitch qualities. What? Nothing could be further from the truth. Drake. Nothing could be further from the truth. <laughs> it, it, exactly. And I'm like, it, it may sound like, because, you know, I, I get where people are coming from, like if it's a kick or if it's a snare and it's really mm -hmm. short, it may just sound like a, you know, just impact a couple milliseconds of sound. But I encourage you, even if you think it doesn't have any pitch qualities, two things you can do. Number one, pitch it up or down just to see if it sounds better or worse. Mm -hmm. If it sounds better or worse, it doesn't matter if you think it has pitch qualities or not. It can fit better into the track or it could mm -hmm. fit worse into the track. So whether you call it pitch or ditch or stitch, whatever you call it, it makes a difference. Uh, okay, maybe not, you know, shit, even with hi-hats, it makes a difference down to the smallest thing, but I can understand oh, where you might want to draw a line and not want to pitch everything, but don't think they don't have any pitch qualities. And also, I, if you can't find the pitch or it's really hard and the sound's just that short, stretch the sound out uh by now every doll has something to stretch the sound out just double just double the length of the sound or even quadruple the length mm -hmm. of the sound and stretch it out and you'll hear the tone in it and pitch it up or down from there and you'll see that everything everything even this you know right there there's a pitch a to note. That. <laughs> right there's a note in there mm -hmm. and every note has a corresponding frequency so even if you can't detect the note, you can detect the frequencies. You can find you a real quick chart right on Google to let you know exactly what note that may be. And then you could also know what frequency to shift it to, to get the, you know, to get the, right. the, the note that you want. But I will say drums always have pitch quality, regardless of how short and insignificant they sound. Pitch them up or pitch them down just to see if they sound better or worse and take it from there. Make it a habit when you're making a beat to do that with your drums. Mm. My question for you, Oracle, is what don't you pitch <laughs> when you're making a beat? Um, <laughs> maybe uh, maybe hi-hats. And it's a few drums that I may not mm. pitch, a few, like a kick or a snare, but I'll at least try it. Try a few semitones yeah. up, a few semitones down. You know, I, And even if something sounds good in pitch, I may go down a fifth or up a fifth mm. just to see. I don't, I, thought, I don't know if it's just me, but like anytime... I, I try to pitch it up and down, and if it's a melody, like I'd be like, I like this preset, but let me let me hit about three more <laughs> and yeah. see if this one will be. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. you always got to keep trying. But I, literally everything I pitch, dog, I at least try because to me, you get some crazy sounds sometimes by accident by pitching stuff. You get stuff that you don't really, you know, think about, and then I I just feel like everything fits better when everything's in the same key. Facts. If your drums are in the same key as your your music. It's not going to be so much clashing. It might not be clashing that you could hear a whole lot, but like it's there. Like, you know what I mean? Like, if yep. everything's cohesive, it's going to flow way better. Man, talk about it, bro. That's like saying panning doesn't matter. To me, it's the same thing. And you yeah. sound crazy saying Giving that. space and putting everything where it's supposed to be. Right. Because panning can be like that too. Where you could just leave everything as it is. You know, it may sound, it may sound really good. Mm. But when you start playing around with stuff and moving stuff around, you'll find that it sounds better. And I think that's where a lot of people different. are making a mistake. Just because they do something and it doesn't sound bad, it sounds good, they're like, it's good enough. But it could actually sound better if you just took a little effort to play with, mm -hmm. shifting it up, shifting it down. And that's part of the reason why people drums don't hit like uh, they should. Mm -hmm. Now it's because it's not in the same. Because you, if your music is in one key and then your your kick is in something else, and it's like rubbing, it's that it's not gonna hit. It's, it's gonna get kind of lost in there. But if everything's you know feng shui, you in there. Feng shui. Sebastian B says oh, this is a really good question. Hold on, I lost it because it's trap of uh, the trap. The chat is going crazy. I okay. Here we go. Does everything in the drums have to be pitched the same? No. Mm -hmm. um like they all don't have to be pitched to the same root they could you could like i said you could pitch up a fifth down a fifth you could do anything you want and when it comes to drums i'm not really pitching by like okay i'm gonna put the snare in d or a right. it's just a, a ear thing like it sounds you ever been to the eye doctor i do like the eye doctor what sounds better one or two Two? Okay, mm -hmm. boom. Okay, what sounds better? Two or three? Right. Three? All right, cool. And then, you know, like, okay. Exactly. Go. 
that's how I that's how I pitch. Just off of ear, like, okay, that sounds that sounds better than that. That sounds better than that. Okay, now now it sounds worse. Let me go back to that. That's kind of that's kind of how I do it. It's not like by A, B, C, or D, because I'm not trying to really do that with a hi hat. But you'll notice things will sound worse or better. I'm not a great judge of character with a lot of things that look good or sound good. I can just really quickly detect when something's wrong. Yeah, exactly. And that's how I get to what sounds good. Uh, Don Corleone, what up, man? He said, that's why uh, acoustic <laughs> drums have uh, pitch key. That's yes, fact. that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you don't tighten up them snares, you know. You know he he, he know about it. Stereo lives matter. <laughs> 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 Panning is a must in my opinion. <laughs> Smoker, you are you are yeah, you are a true uh, scholar for that. Uh, I see oh, a couple shout outs. Jerry Nova in the building. Hey, young Jerry Nova. Your realistic is in the building. Oh, realistic he, to God. Oh, well, he shed he shed light on what we just oh, talked man. about. The argument was that the drums uh, deal with timber, not pitch. But the literal definition of timber is pitch and intensity. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> that boy pied. Come on, boy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Timber, my bad. Timber, timber, timber. You know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's still said, people. Are... Go ahead, go ahead. No, I was saying it's still people putting 808s in the wrong key. So I, I, I don't expect any less. That's exactly what somebody is about to say. Uh, motherfuckers putting drums in certain keys, 808s, uh, one thing, then the drums. Okay, yeah. Well, yes, it's just a lot of people out here putting uh, 808s in the wrong key. Bro, don't nothing stress me out more than that, bro. No, it's a style to some people now. Bro, that joint irks me, dog. And I get it. Like, when I wasn't good at theory, I would have moments where I would go to, I wouldn't go to the root. I would go to, like, the the fifth, you know what I mean? Uh It kind of works sometimes, but then once I start understanding, like, okay. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, this is where I'm messing up at. It's a must-have. And, you know, you it just understanding the basics to to get you by. Yeah. Because if not, it's going to sound crazy. Shit, I hit you with the whole octave, bro. I'll go up or down. Matter of fact, I got an octave um, sampling technique. I'll talk about it in the the next half, because we only got, like, two minutes left. Mm -hmm in this half and we can get into some real questions in the next half because I, I didn't touch any any questions that we have yet we've been having these good ass conversations over here so listen man <laughs> uh, listen if you haven't already hit up soundorcle.net hit up the producer kit.com get yes, the, sir. the dopest most ultimate trap library ever been trapping fives for the kicks go. melodies midi stems snares 808s just Everything that you could possibly need to make a dope trap hit instantly. Go check out uh, soundlocal.net or the producer kit. Get yours today. Sorry, I got the hiccups from that good ass drink that my wife made me. And, and the bonus. And, and oh, let's not forget the bonus is actually over on my on my. Oh, I need to switch that in. I yeah, forgot. yeah, yeah. I just ended the. Uh, I just ended the bonus. <laughs> I forgot. I need to switch that. Thanks for reminding me. But listen, if you have a question that that we didn't get to, um. We're coming right back. Ask it in the second half. And also I have a, a list of questions that we got to get to. So, you know, the, the second half we'll call the power, the power user segment. You know what I'm Let's saying? Let's get it. So listen, man, Instagram, we getting off, we getting right back. YouTube, you stay right where you at. And yeah. Yeah. All right. We are off the grammar and we're about to go. YouTube, back. let's see. Nocturnal music, what up, bro? I did not expect that conversation to go that that direction. I oh, well. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. <laughs> All right, I'm hitting the live button. All right, cool. I'm joining back in. Yo, have it, you it. seen this? Uh, it's a meme, and it was like, you know, it's an R&B hit when Missy Yeah at the beginning knew, knew something. Like, new Monica! Nah, but that is a <laughs> fact, bro. Yo, that just had me die. I was like, that's very true. <laughs> that is a fact. New Brandy! Yeah, anything anything man listen we are back for the second half of unquantized podcast welcome (laughs) this is the segment where we actually get into some serious questions we had a question at the end of the second half i forgot what it was bro that fast oh i know somebody uh said what key should your 808s be the key of the song or a key a, a note that fits the key of the song you know what i think what a lot of people mess up too is that they don't understand that 
when you get certain sample packs, ours aren't like that. Everything is tuned to C. Oh yeah, but we, some we tune sample, ours for you. Yeah, but if they're not tuned, you have to check what uh, what note it is, because if not, sometimes you'll get an eight hundred eight that's in C sharp. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And then everything that you play is going to be completely off. So you have to make sure that you tune it to C, and then make sure that your doll is like, all right, cool, I'm reading it at C. And then, because if not, everything's going to be off key. And you'd be like, man, I'm playing the right notes. And it's going to yeah. sound crazy. That's a fact. Uh, yeah, we don't do that to you. All of our 808s are always tuned to C. But, you know, back in the day, I would just have an 808 that would sound dope. I wouldn't, mm-hmm. you know, I would have total disregard to what key it was in when I put it inside of the pack. But you grow, you learn. You become a grown man with your packs. You, you, tune, <laughs> your, you tune your 808s to C <laughs> for people. You know what I'm saying? You label your... It sounds correctly for people. I don't understand people that's that's not doing that. You don't recycle sounds, but I'm not even getting into all that because that's a whole other story that I don't want to get into and start naming names and all that type of thing. So <laughs> we can just go DJ ahead Hourglass, what up? Shout, yo, go check out DJ Hourglass Boiler Room. One of my my go to if I'm you know, feeling trying to get the vibe right. I go right. listen to that. All right. Let's see. Uh, C Webstar says, is there any difference between Mac OS and Windows? There's a huge difference. Yeah. More, more difference than we're prepared to argue, debate, and fight about <laughs> on this segment of the show. But yeah, there's a big difference. I'm not gonna lie. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna guide you to YouTube for that, bro. Um, yeah, I think I think it's more of like aesthetic though. Like, like well, the I, file I system is different too. Yeah, that's the thing. Yeah, that's true. That's very true. I just don't like, even with like the phones, like I just don't, I don't like customizing all the stuff. I want mine just to look good and that's what it is. But the people who like to customize, I feel like they gravitate more towards like Android and like Windows type stuff. So I guess it depends on what kind of person you are. Yeah. And I have, I have both. I have had both since February. I've had an Android and an iPhone. Yeah. Since February. Maybe maybe we could talk about that next week. Uh, shout out to whoever just bought that uh, Young Ben Trapping. Yep. Smoking Ace says, how often are you listening to instrumental projects and do you erase... What? <laughs> <laughs> Am I tripping? Uh, I'm going to say, er- yeah, erroneously know uh, people that have been successful in doing them. Uh, yeah, I do know people that have been successful mm-hmm. with doing instrumental albums, but it depends on what your definition of success is. If your definition of it's like a it's like running an ad. Is your definition to get exposure or engagement? Right. Or is your definition to get convergence? Um, so saying all that with an instrumental album, if your success is measured by how many people now know about you that didn't know about you before, mm-hmm. that's one thing. How many artists reach out to you and now want to lease or buy beats from you that's another thing how many placements you get that's another thing so it depends on what success is to you but saying all that to say i do know people that have had success and i don't know anyone who's put out an instrumental um album that has complained about it or said they had a bad experience or wish they never did it oh yeah and i do listen i do listen to them quite quite a lot actually I would say, man, check out Catronada. To me, he's like one of the greatest examples of someone who, I mean, some some of his records got uh, like vocals on them, but mm-hmm. a majority is just instrumentals. He tours, he goes worldwide, does shows, and highly successful from instrumentals. So if you're looking yeah. at like a role model for something like that, look at what he's doing. Facts. And after that, you could check out a... Um a not so well-known producer that I listen to their instrumental albums all the time by the name of Jay Dilla. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now, when it comes to instrumental albums, he no. is a pioneer to me. And not even that he was a first, because you know, it was like Pete Rock was doing instrumental albums back then. A lot of people were doing instrumental albums, but mm. Dilla just like made it like his thing, bro. bro. Dilla's Un- so fire, bro. Unfinished instrumental album type deal. Bro, I was... uh. I had just finished riding my bike and then I had came, uh, I was like driving back to the crib and I had my windows down and then Slump Village came, uh, oh. Dilla producer. I'm in there like going crazy. I know all the people beside me is looking at me like, what is wrong with this man? Bruh. <laughs> like, you don't hear this Dilla bass line? 
Duh, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Dilla. Best instrumental albums in the uh in, in the world. Also, man, uh E Jones, he he got the Dead Stock series. He makes dope instrumental albums oh, too. Yeah, yeah. Um, so shout out to him. You may see Spice Adams doing a little workout to some of them joints every now and again. So yeah, shout out to him. Uh, let's see. Yo, do you guys ever play viewer songs and constructively criticize uh, for the stream? No, we've talked about it before. Um, I'd like yeah. to get into it one day. You, I know you, you, know, you were going to do something at one point though. Yeah, so I, I was starting to do it and then I had issues with my stream. And but recently I just bought new routers all for the crib, and then uh, I just talked to Young BusyWorks today to help me get my my. He sent me a video, but to get my OBS and my streaming stuff all the way right. For sure. So you know I'm working on it, trying to figure it out, trying to get these little issues out that I'm having with live streaming. But once I figure that out, I definitely will. You know, we'll we'll start doing it more, and I get Oracle on there. Yeah. Um. Cool. Oh yeah, I'm on it. I'm on it. Uh, yeah. We have an inter- interesting question. Were you about to say something? Oh, I was going to read. Don Corleone said, just got that Ben Trapper 5 kit, my brothers. No, appreciate you, man. <laughs> Thank you, my dog. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, family. Don Corleone, always showing support. Um, here's a dope question. When sampling sounds out in the world, what do you look for that makes you go, that would be a dope sample or dope snare or dope kick? Honestly, man, with me, it's a low tech system. It's just feeling. <laughs> it's just it's just feeling like you'll hear something, or I'll hear something, and be like, "Yo, mm. that's dope." And even if I'm the only person there, a voice in my head will say, "Yo, hit that again," right. or "Yo, do that again." And um, yeah, it, that's that's really what it is. It's it's all about um, it's all about feeling. Mm-hmm. A lot of times, especially when it comes to create, like compiling and creating fast. Because when I sample and do like. Uh, you know, just like sampling stuff out in the world and all that. I, I like to do it fast and I like to do it organically. So when you when you really get into thought about things like that, it takes away from the experience. So I just really go off of, yo, that's fire. That sounds dope. Or even so, I may just be like a potentially, it, that don't sound that good, but let me just get it and then in post. Oh, yeah. I can make it sound like something. Or I could put it with uh something so to answer your question in short though it's feeling just all raw feeling your oracle be looking like uh the <laughs> like those dude on national geographic with the mic like he just be <laughs> he be wandering around like oh let me see what i can sample uh, yo that's the other now. day <laughs> Bro, we had a storm oracle. yesterday oh i'm sure you was out there i didn't see an oracle sample some wild stuff like oh yeah let me grab this mic run outside yeah, yeah. So. Right, I go right right out back of the crib, put a, I, put a I, stick to something real quick. I learned my sampling techniques from this guy, so I can't hey, give you a better answer than, <laughs> than what he gave you. Um, or is it more maintenance with Windows versus Mac? Um, I, I'm going to say, I mean, I'm biased because I've only been on the Mac for the past like 12 years. Mm-hmm. So I think a Mac is pretty easy to deal with. It's not. I haven't had a virus this whole time. Um, um, I'm gonna say it's equal at this point. Um, I computer wise, I've used Windows exclusively as my personal, my own personal computer. However, I have bought a few Macs uh, for for some people. I do know how they work. I have a lot of Apple products. I will say at this point, it's equal because the whole um, Windows and viruses thing was true. But as of like, like I said, I had a virus since like 2009, 2010, something like that. Like that just kind of like not a thing anymore. So I I think that they're both kind of equal. And outside of the uh, file system and the aesthetics, uh, the file system and the aesthetics are going to be your only thing different factors somebody can correct me if i'm wrong but and the price P- windows is way cheaper i ain't gonna front as a mac guy and the price yeah 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 so price aesthetics and the file system so check out those three things and then make your decision based off of that but as far as maintenance goes um it's not any maintenance on pcs when you get a pc you just have to get like a virus protection program and all this type you don't got to do none of that no more it comes with windows defender you don't see it you don't have to do anything right. with it it's um it's pretty cool 
like I said, I haven't had a virus on my computer since like 2010. I'm also not looking at anything crazy on my computer. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, that, that, that probably that, goes a long part. way, you know? <laughs> I, I'm not, I ain't doing nothing wild out here, bro. VPN no. it up, it guys. You know, use yeah. that VPN. Y'all be safe out here, okay? <laughs> All right. That is. <laughs> I All forgot, right. bro. That's how you know we've been on the up and up. I forget about that part. Yeah. I remember Lime, dog, Lime Wire, bro. It was a risk, dog. You think wow. you download Soldier Boy song, you catch all kinds of. <laughs> That's a fact, bro. <laughs> like, yeah. oh, no. Oh, mm -mm. no. Uh, would, you, would you think this is a good comparison and tell me if I'm wrong and mm -hmm. I might be biased but to me a Mac is like getting I don't want to say a Tesla but getting like a like a newer car that's just like all the stuff is in there and then getting a, a Windows is like you could have all those options but it's one of those cars that you could build and customize however you want like almost like a I don't want to say a Honda but like you know how people be racing and they switch out all the stuff the components to me, yeah. that's more of a Windows, and then a Mac is like, this is what you get. This is, you don't really change much on it, but if you like it, that's what it is. To a degree. I used to say yes to that. You you are right. Hmm. The only difference I would make is that if you do get a Windows computer, you can just use it out the box the same way you would use a Mac. Now, back oh, in the bro. day, there were a few things that I had to change all the time. Now it's kind of like if, if you don't want to customize your, your Windows machine, you don't have to do anything. It'll work just fine. But if you do want to customize, you have the option. Makes yeah. sense. I'm still yeah. I'm still thinking about getting a, a PC for streaming just because I feel like it's a little bit better. Well, I mean, if you do, I know a guy you could talk to that'll help you out if you got any questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, might, I might have to do that because I got an iMac sitting over here, but... I'm gonna try that first, and then I'm gonna see see what's going on. Whoa. Whoa. Okay, let's see. How do I approach artists to sell beats? Um, in groups. <laughs> in that, group. And then I think it's gonna be if you're just approaching people, be like, "Hey, you want to buy a beat?" It's like, have you ever went somewhere and someone is trying to sell you something randomly? It's like, yo. You got to qualify that person. Does that person want to buy beats? Are they someone who does buy beats? And why should they buy from you? Exactly. You got to you gotta convince somebody why they should buy from you. Regardless of how warm they are to the buying experience, no matter how bad they want to buy, you should still have something in the stash that lets a person know why they should buy from you specifically. Yeah, so I, again, network, DM, Show show your work, like you know, high school when they used to make you do the math problem. Show your work, man. Post it on Instagram. Show you making beats, you know, and just don't do boring stuff. Try to be interesting as as much as possible, you know, because you got to think of, are you gonna watch somebody? Like I hate seeing those videos of people like posting beats and they just showing their screen. Oh yeah. And it's like uh, sixty seconds of just them showing the screen. It's like, bro, like. I, I don't care that much, bro. Like, I'm not going to watch this, I this whole thing. I don't care that much. But the people who are, like, creative about it, it's like, oh, I'm going to watch it. Like, I feel like Jay Black and Trizzy, they're always going to win because it's always interesting to watch them make yeah, a it's, beat. it's entertaining. Yeah. And don't sleep on that uh, amount of production value as far as what you're seeing. Even though they may do it a lot and it may be set up, it still takes a lot to put that mm -hmm. together. You know what I'm saying? Just to do right. it, just to film it right, to edit it, to to get it put out. Oh, right. As somebody who used to do a ton, a ton Man. of beat making videos, before it was like the thing to do, I was doing a ton of beat making videos. And the reason why I do, do so many now is because it, it's a bit to set them up. It's a bit to edit. You know, it, 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 it just became a bit. Yeah. Dang, I missed that sound, bro. I ain't heard that sound in. I ain't heard that sound in a couple weeks, dog. Oh, I ain't going to hear it too much longer. Uh, <laughs> my damn self. I'm, I'm about uh, to be out, bro. Oh, man. They, they trying to get me back in, but I'm, I'm, I'm kind of where you at. Man, I'm good. In case y'all don't know what we're talking about, we're talking about Airbnb. Yeah, we're both uh, Airbnb host. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Super host. Super host. <laughs> super host. Come on, man. Let's, come on. Talk your shit. Come on. We, we super host out here in these streets. We ain't, we ain't regular. Yeah, that's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, um, smoke smoke mm -hmm. Dog says, what if someone tries to steal your beat? 
I'll be honest with you, man. Um, it happens from time to time, but I don't think that that's a major concern. Yeah, like I, that. I don't be thinking about that at I, all. I, I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I could care. But I mean, one, if someone steals your beat, that means you're doing something right. <laughs> Who's you know the someone? Mean? Two. Yeah. And then it's two. It's like if someone steals your beat, okay, if it's like a big person, cool, lawyer, lawyer up, do all that stuff, they place it somewhere. But mm-hmm. if it's some random Joe Blow guy who just started making beats, it's kind of like. do not matter. It's kind of like the Nicki Minaj situation. They're not profiting off of this. So it's like, what's the point of suing if they're not making money, you know? That's a fact. They're going to play it for like, 20 people and that's going to be it. He said, that's why I'm scared to put it out there. Don't be. Don't. Don't be. No, 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 no. D- yeah, don't. That's, yeah, don't at all. <laughs> First of all, sir, lady, sir, lady, I don't know what you are. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you some tough love. The arrogance. <laughs> right. <laughs> the, <Good point. laughs> the sheer audacity of you to think that someone would want to steal your beat shows where you place your skills or your contributions mm-hmm. to the production community you think your stuff is so good that as soon as people hear it somebody's gonna want to steal this i'm not saying you're wrong i'm saying you should prove us right or wrong yeah by putting that shit out big facts i'm i'm one of those guys uh you know if i was to hypothetically do a crime i'm not robbing a gas station i'm going for the, the for the bank you know what i mean yeah, something's worth the, my while you're gonna hit the armored truck on the way to the bank yeah yeah, so yeah. by saying that is, I'm not gonna steal random guy number 15's beats. I'm gonna steal. <laughs> to right. I'm going for the what I know works. If I'm gonna steal something, <laughs> and person I mean? I'm talking to, don't get it twisted. That is my way of making making you post your stuff online because you're reluctant to. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't worry about that no. at all, man. You you can't be you can't go around in this, especially in entertainment, like being scared that somebody's gonna do something to you. What you have to do is just be knowledgeable, and if that situation. It's happened to me. You just got to be knowledgeable about what to do in that situation. But yeah. don't be afraid of that, like, at all. Like, man, put your music out there. People going to enjoy it. And the crazy thing is so many resources. People don't really steal like that no more. Not that I know of. Like, I haven't really heard of people really OD stealing like that. Yeah, like, back in the day, it was, it, was, it was way worse because it wasn't, like, all these loops and stuff. Yeah, to like, where You know, where somebody needed an idea, they just like, yeah, I'm going to go. <laughs> but that's that yeah. now it's like it's so much stuff that you could get that it's kind of like ain't no point you know what i mean facts uh well here's a good question this is not a technical question what's one classic album that you wish you had more insight or a documentary on Ooh. okay there's gonna be a, t- a ton of these a ton of these but i'll list two and they're by the same artists um, I'm gonna my best say, friend Jacob. what up, bro? My bad. What up, bro? I'm gonna say, <laughs> AT- my best friend Jacob. Yep, shout out to him. Shout out to him. <laughs> I'm gonna say, AT Aliens and Equimini, mm. just because those are two of my favorite uh albums, and I just figured I used two albums by the same group because technically it's like 20 albums I could say this about, but um, I would just because I know how many people were involved in putting these albums together, oh, yeah. a dope documentary on one of, if not both of those albums, I would love uh, just to see, you know, the whole dungeon family and organized noise mm. and all that good stuff in action. First, the problem is the classic albums, because it's only a few classic albums that I really like. Mm. Like, y'all know I speak all the time, Justin Timberlake Justified, classic album, but it is a, a documentary. It's like a seven hour documentary about that album. So I can't use that one. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, I love that A. Marie album, but it's like, Oh, yeah, shout out to Rich Harrison. I don't know if I want to see a documentary about it. I want to, I'm trying to like think to see, a, I would like to see Rich working for like an hour. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I want to, I'm trying to think of an artist that was like mad turned up, but at the same time, the album was classic. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that would be the one where I'd be like, ooh, I want to see how they made that would, this. That would be a DMX album. You know what? A good one, though, I think would be like Usher Confessions because it was such like a, like Usher at his prime, like, you know what I mean? Like JD. Everybody at their prime, honestly. Yeah, everybody at their top peak. And then it's like, you know, I think that would be a good one just to see how that one came about. And then just, you know, I know I know how they roll. So that's part of the reason why I'm like, all right, yeah. I'm sure some interesting shit happened. Do they like the club and party and get ideas and then <laughs> come back to the studio, you know? 
you know, like most most Atlanta artists do. Oh man, I ain't gonna front. I do miss that, man. I miss I miss the the, club and back to the studio. We're gonna wake up at four in the afternoon. We're gonna eat, get ready to go to the club. We're gonna club (laughs) all night, get drunk, and then go to the studio to start working until about six in the morning. Every once in a while, I can't do it every day, but Hmm. every once in a while, those are fun nights, and you get some really good ideas from being out. Smart. Yeah. So I got a um it's not even a it's not even a question. Something I want to I wanted to point out uh real quick and just get everybody's take on it. When it comes to, do you find that you produce differently on pads than you do on keys? And if so, describe those differences. I do. I'm not a pad person, man. I think it's because I'm so, because I've always had a keyboard that I, I'm better at a keyboard than I am with the drum pad because I feel like it's it's like almost like anything, like me on the guitar, like I just go to what I know. So me trying to finger drum stuff, I feel like I always go to the same patterns that I'm used to. But the keyboard, I'm so comfortable, I could kind of like, it's not, I'm not so like limited on like, all right, I'm trying to do all this stuff at the same time. But I do feel like it's a difference between like, pad and keyboard versus clicking stuff in it's a big difference Mm -hmm. to me i would have to agree um i do stuff totally different on pads than i would on keyboards Mm -hmm. i came from a pad background but i quickly learned to respect the uh the keyboard i will say i would say if it came down Mm -hmm. to having one or the other i would definitely go keys only because Mm -hmm. you do uh you could do more and you could do uh, more better. That's not really an argument for me. But I do notice that there's there's a difference. And depending on, like, I'll start something, and depending on where it's going, I may switch. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I may use pads for certain things. I may use keys for certain things. Because I know if I use keys, um, it's, it's just going to be different. I can't say it's going to be better or worse than if I use pads, but I just know it's going to be it's really going to be different. Right. Yeah. I, I often like I'll start the drum pattern on the keys and then I'll like draw the rust in like the the accents and stuff. OK, like I don't do it all in one take. I just sometimes I'd be like, all right, I like this concept. Let me try to embellish it with the piano roll. Okay. And then um, and I seen somebody says, like, I couldn't imagine doing melodies on the pad. Bro, it's people. They go oh, stupid, sh- bro. Bro. Tech beats. <laughs> Duh, I used to melody on tech. Yo, shout out to my brother Tech Beats. Yo, Yo Tech was so stupid. I love Tech Beats. That's my brother. I also hate Tech Beats guts. <laughs> Anytime I told him this the other day, every time we talk, he always got me revisiting some bullshit that I didn't want to revisit because I got too much stuff to do. Mm. So I, and, and the only reason I'm super tight about this is because in between working on what I really need to work on, I'm revisiting something that he brought to my mind that I am so mad that he even brought up this week but anyway shout out to my brother tech beats and uh making melodies on the pads helped me out with making melodies on the keys because i was using pads first but i do know the correlation between certain pads and i didn't know i was noticing the correlation of certain steps in that scale you know what i mean like if your main pad is on one your uh pad one pad five uh, pad nine, pad 12, those are going to always be in key. And yeah, then you got, you know, right. you got your sevens, you got your seven and your two and all that, all that type of stuff. So having 16 pads and then just having your root key on a, on a specific square, you know, off the rip four four or five squares that are, that are going to always work. This is just right. this is gonna be your scale right there. So, um, and it taught me that because when it came to keys is 61 keys, 16 pads. I'm happy I learned on the pads. So now when I looked at the keys, I'm like, oh yeah, five up. You know, you know, yeah. I knew, knew what an octave was because on the NPC, I would, you know, you go one, then you go up to 12 and then, uh, you know, two. Cause it can 13. be intimidating, the keyboard. Cause it's yes. so much. You got to understand how to just like, all right, this is what it is. Yeah, it's no black pads and white pads and right. you know that. it's only 16. Yeah. From, I'm telling you, I had the biggest issue with music theory because I was learning from so many different people and everybody kept telling me something different to focus on. Uh, and then yeah. once I once I stopped that and then just like, all right, cool. This, this is what I need to learn. Find the bass notes. These are the chords that go with the scale. Bro, everything made sense. 
Yeah. Like, like I could play damn near most stuff by ear. Like, if I hear it, I could be like, all right, cool. And it's pretty quickly, maybe like three minutes now. But before, at one time, bro, it was. You know who helped me is Paul Cabin. That's who, oh, at your well, house. Think, oh yeah, yeah. When, yeah. When he came, when he came here, well, when Paul Cabin was on the podcast, he stayed mm-hmm. for about two hours uh, at least after the show. Gave us the best tutorial mm-hmm. slash crash course on music theory ever. Shout out to Paul yep. Cabin, man. Yeah, shout out to Paul, man, because that he was the first person to explain it to me where I was like, oh, I just I get it. Everybody else it was like it was it was kind of complicated. It didn't. It didn't dawn on me the way I needed it to. But Paul was like, yo, you just do this, 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 and then you look for this. All right, cool. There you go. Try yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, and Paul, he explained it in a way that was really uh, easy to understand. Mm-hmm. And he explained certain things that I, I think you could, you could vouch for this too. He explained mm-hmm. certain things that we kind of knew, but you yeah. know how sometimes you know something, but you don't know exactly what you know or how you right. know it. Like, you know, like, oh, this key and this key are going to always go together but why mm. he would explain the well, the why right you're like oh now i understand what i already knew better and then of course he taught us a bunch of new shit too exactly someone uh, says paul who paul cabin look him up man if you don't know who he is <laughs> he's uh i don't know he's like the go-to guy man if you want to recreate a sample he's like the goat for that and then he's just a, a fire producer, man. Like, but his his keyboard game is is outrageous, dog. It's insane, and he's so humble with it. I hate him. Yeah, it's like, yeah, oh man, he, what? He, That's nothing. Yeah, he be like, oh, oh. this minor nineteenth. <laughs> it's just one. It's just a one knuckle, two knuckle. Like, yeah. what, what are you talking about? I don't know one knuckle, two knuckle. What what is that? So. Uh, let's, let's see. Someone says uh, that's what I like to get uh, play by ear. Yo. A lot of it for me, it was just practicing scales and then understanding that I think once you understand it, certain scales have certain chords to go with them. And then what mm. you're hearing is just a variation of that chord, right? So the inversions is augmented chords. But like once you get the basics of hearing the bass note and then knowing that it's a chord that goes with that bass, yeah, it makes it so much quicker. So that's why you see people. I don't know if you like a church goer, but like you would hear like hear people in church and they're just going up and down chromatically, like oh, yeah. they're, they're trying to find that note, and then they you hear them tap that note, and then it's like yep. they know the now song instantly. Yeah, yep. it's because it's a pattern to it. Like once you understand that pattern of like, oh, this is the bass note, and then this is the chords that go with it, it's easy. But before yep. then, I had no clue of like how that worked. And I was just kind of going by ear, which I would get it right, but it would take me so long. To figure it, bro. For me to figure out something, it take me like twenty minutes, and I would be like frustrated by the end of it, like, bro, yeah, because like, your, your vibe is gone. Yeah, but now it's like I hear a song, I'd be like, it's almost to the point where it's like I hear a note, and I'd be like, oh, that's a G, because I've I've been kind of working at that, you know, that perfect pitch kind of thing. I'm yeah. still nowhere close to that, but like it's getting a lot better. <laughs> no, we should have a, uh, we should do something, do something to encourage everybody to get perfect pitch. Ooh. Look at me spit spitballing ideas. Thirty day challenge. Bro. Yep, exactly. Mm-hmm. We might have to talk about that. Yeah, we might have to do that. <laughs> All right. Someone says I use Machine, and I'm a huge fan of Ninth Wonder, Crisis, and Knots. I'm trying to get my drums Ooh. to sound similar to theirs. I keep practicing, but my drums always sound subpar to me. Can you please offer any suggestions? Mm-hmm. First of all, you named a great trio of gentlemen they are amazing I actually has something to say about knots that was in my notes today i'll get to that in a minute but to answer your question i am not claiming to be a uh, a, a genius or having any inside scoop on what these gentlemen are doing but i do have a few suggestions for you number one if you aren't familiar with become very familiar with break beats there are hundreds if not thousands of classic break beats it's probably a core 50 that comprise the uh most of the golden era of hip-hop anyway i would say become familiar with break beats uh get them find them where you can chop them up i know a lot of them use classic break beats i i for one use break beats i'm a break beat lover and then once yes, you sir. get in that arena um uh, you know, you could layer your break beats with more modern drums. Or sometimes break beats, they may be, um, you know, dynamically, they may not give you what you want because they weren't made for hip hop or anything like that. So you might have to layer them with some other, uh, you know, kicks or snares or something like that. But definitely, if you want to get that sound, 
go break beat, layer them. Uh, break beat kicks usually won't have the bottom that you want. Uh, what I would do is even uh, low cut those, put a filtered kick with a nice solid body behind it. Now you got you a good break beat sounding kick. Snares are a little more uh, seasoned to taste because it's a lot of, it's a high end thing going there, sure. but you can mix two snares together. Sound really good, but break beats is going to be your way to go on that. Definitely. Yeah, I think one, you got to think, look at sound selection. Mm -hmm. Those got all the good people you named, incredible at sound selection, which yes, to indeed. me is a, a huge part of the battle of picking the right sounds and knowing what kick to use, what snare to use, what hi hat. And um, I mean, and in practice, man, you talking these all of those guys got well over 10,000. They got about 40,000 hours of making beats. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, like knots I and mean, he he said somebody else like i ain't heard that name in a minute but Knotts, i was glad crisis 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 yeah, is a Shutter beast crisis. bro yeah. yeah monster that's yeah, one of the names that, nice. now i gotta go listen to some of his stuff man yeah crisis is definitely a monster yeah. um the thing i want to say about knots real quick is shout out to knots um uh, actually shout out to the locks the locks came out with an album um always excited really? yeah they came out with an album locks living off experience I'm always excited to hear the locks. Uh, it's a full group album. You getting, all right, I'm not here to do a whole album review, but you're getting every type of locks song you ever heard. Some people may like it, some people not. You're getting your hardcore locks, but you're even getting your girl record locks. You're getting even island vibe oh, wow. locks. It's Jeremiah's <laughs> on the album, T Pain's on the album, but also That's... West Side Gun and Benny the Butcher's on the wow. album. So hmm. it's, it's very different. It's a very diverse album. Me personally, I'm more of a just give me the street locks. Right. But hey, girl song locks serves its purpose. Uh, I don't like locks. locks and, <laughs> my service purpose as well. That's so crazy, bro. <laughs> yeah, that's a fact. That's a, I don't vibe locks. So the locks in, in Jeremiah. That's Jeremiah, nice. bro, people sleep on him. He be having his dog. Like he's a, a he's a cold blooded with the that's right. But real quick, real quick. Um, Knotts did he produced a track on there called Story and it's literally the locks telling a three band story. And I, I don't think oh, wow. I've ever heard them do that before. So uh that's dope. So shout out to him for that <laughs> awesome track. And I, I, I like the album, man, but I'm a locks fan, so you know, check it out. I'm putting that on my notes to to listen to. Yeah, definitely, man. Shout out to young Knotts. Yeah, Knotts is man, goat, bro. I know we always talk about Knotts, but Come on, that's VA, man. We got to talk he, about that. Always cold-blooded, dog, with the beats. Ain't no playing in VA. That's not how the song goes, but you know what I'm saying. Um, Let's see. Uh, movies, documentaries to watch as a producer. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, What's your boy? Uh, David Foster? I still ain't see. I keep forgetting, bro. I was looking for something to watch yesterday and forgot all about that. That oh, I got a whole section I want to do about stuff to watch, but anyway, David Foster was good. Um, you only know, because it's recent, the Master P. Jump. I say that, oh, yeah, that's really good. That was good. I, I, I ain't gonna lie, I only watched two episodes of the Rough Riders joints. Uh, as I work tonight, I'm gonna to put that on, um, because mm. I want to get caught up on that. Yo, it's one, it's on YouTube, uh. It was a Stockholm, Aidens, and Watkins, I believe. They're called Saw. If you type in Saw music documentary, and they're the guys who uh, did like the Rick Aisley, they're never going to give you uh, They did basically every 70s, 80s hits that you could think of. Like they had a run, and they basically taught Max Martin, who was like the pop guy. I got to watch that. Their form. That's one of my favorite. I watch that joint like maybe like twice a month, the same joint, just over and over. Like I just keep watching it. I gotta um, watch that. Yeah, that's it's a really good one. I love that joint. So I feel like that's a good one. Um, it was another one. I can't quite think of it right. Copyright criminals, but that's one sampling. That's one of my favorite ones. Oh, uh, yeah, copyright criminals is dope. Um, it's not a documentary. Well, everything's but, a remix. Oh, that is it. That is it. I think you put me on. Somebody put me yeah. on that. It might be you. Yeah, everything's a remix. That well, was the dope. producer name. God, I can't think of his name. But yeah. That's a really good one. Check that also, one out. Also, the Dungeon Family one, which I still have not mm. really seen myself. And it's, it, it's almost impossible to find it. It's impossible. They wiped it. It's a, it's a horrible version on YouTube that I couldn't even uh, I couldn't even watch. But it originally aired on Netflix in like 2016 mm. or something like that. It's, it's long since been gone. 
Yeah. Oh, you gotta see that Quincy Jones doc. Yo, Quincy Jones a go, bro. Oh yeah, that's a fact. When I get older, I hope to be like him. My my man is just drinking wine and living his best life <laughs> and, and not caring and what, not caring at all, bro. What a printer says. Bink was talking about uh, Notch the other day. He said he used uh, different drums all the time, like Jay Dilla. Yeah, yeah. I see some similarities between Notch and Dilla. Also, Bink uh, is another one. <sighs> Yeah, Bink <laughs> Bink is a monster. Eh, pun intended. Yeah, Bink is a monster. Also from awesome from VA. Come on, man. Let's give it up for our VA brethren. Um, and he has a cool uh interview series going on. Who was he talking? He was I saw him talking to somebody over there. Oh, the other homies, Mike and Keys. Oh dope. Yeah, Bink. Check that out. Yeah, Bink was interviewing Mike and Keys. Shout out to somebody who put that in the unquantized group chat. I think it was smoking or hey. apprentice or uh, one of you guys, man. Thank you for whoever put that in there. But I was able to check out the Bink, uh, also Mike and Keys um, interview, and they're dope. Shout out to Mike and Keys. I'm not going to take up too much time, but they are hella dope. Um, you know, they pioneered a lot of stuff for Missy and just just a just a whole Word. bunch of people. I'm not even going to get into it, but Mike and Keys are so dope. I knew of them. They knew of me. Um, we never met each other before, but I was in Paris. They had not yet come to Paris, but they they knew I was going to be there. I knew they were going to be mm-hmm. there. There was something that I wanted from the States that they did not have in Paris. And someone from Paris reached out to them before they came here and they bought me, they brought me what I wanted from the States oh, wow. to Paris, right to the beat battle, directly to the beat battle, came straight, delivered it to me. And that is how I met Mike and Keys that very day. And they also had a, a, a T.I. song that was popping because T.I. had just came out with an album like that weekend. So that just goes to show like they're dope producers, but they're also great right. dudes. We never met, but they, they went out and bought me something and brought it to France for me in 24 hours. So, man, right, shout wild. out to Mike and Keys. Man. They dope. Yeah, they dope as hell, bro. Um, any tips on three-fourths beats? I did one for a client because he asked me for a three-fourth beat. I got the beat done, but he's struggling to fit his vocals over that. Um, what would you do to help him out with that? What would um, you guys do? Tell him that he shouldn't have asked for that beat. So, <laughs> right. Like, he trying no. to do the waltz. <laughs> I mean, you know, as a producer, you could produce like if you hear what he's supposed to be doing, then you can guide him. But if not, mm-hmm. it may not be his. It may not be his get down. It, yeah. it, it just it just might. Now, I really want to ask: Is he a rapper or a singer? That's gonna matter yeah. to me a lot. So, if you could mm-hmm. answer that in the uh, comments, that would matter. It's a lot. three fourths. It's one of those things. That it could be done. But it's one of those things that I haven't really heard in the mainstream done very well. Like, it's only a few songs where I really love and I'm like, oh, that's three fourths. Like, Kanye West Spaceship. Every time I hear it, it's like, oh, that's three fourths. I get it. Like, and he, they did it well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you got to think, it changes the arrangement. Because you're, you know, anytime you change the time signature, the arrangement is going to get changed. So you have to approach it differently depending yeah. on what time signature you're in. So again, look at, popular songs that's in three fourth see what they did see how many bars they got going on you know what i mean and then kind of base it off of that but three fourths i mean it's not tricky but it's just not as common yeah i am um i'm not a fan of rappers rapping to three fourth beats not yeah. not that all of them are bad but the majority of the ones i could think of i would rather have not heard them and these are from some of my favorite rappers I just right. don't think three fourths is really cool for rapping. However, for R and B, I like to see more three fourths. I actually oh, have yeah. a, I got a folder of of three fourth beats mm-hmm. that you know I just happen to make. I got like four or five of them that I, I really like three fourth beats, but a lot of people don't like that waltz. It, it's really yeah. just it's really a waltz. You know what I mean? One, I, two, I, I like three. it. One two three. Yeah, it's just a waltz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm, I'm with it. I'm with it. And I feel like it limits your drum patterns. Like I haven't heard nobody get really creative with no three fours. The thing is, you got to get the the shuffle. I got a pattern, a drum pattern that I made. It has such a shuffle in it between the joints that it's it's a real groove, and it's not like your typical mm. boom boom trick type deal. Yeah, I, I, bro, I, if it's not four four, bro, I hate messing with it because it just. I just feel like I, it gets me out of my comfort zone too much. Where I'm like, I'm overthinking stuff. Like, oh man. Should I do the arrangement like that? 
to me, it's like four four. I can knock this joint out and get on to the next one. You know, facts. Unless it's very specific, I guess. Facts. Oh, Prentice said, uh, "You're welcome." I think he's he's the one that put that um, that thing in the in the chat. Thanks, thanks, Prentice. Yeah. Shout out to young Prentice. Always good peoples. Uh, let's see. Do you think 808s are overused in hip hop? No. no, not at all. Not at all. 808s are not overused in hip hop. 808s are not even overused in trap. They're used yeah. precisely as much as and where they are intended to be used. And actually, mm. the overuse, or for this conversation, I'll say the proper use of 808s actually help define uh trap as a genre to me oh, yeah. personally like to define trap you immediately have to talk <laughs> about the 808 like it's the most 808s and that's it a... exactly that's what i was gonna say second <laughs> would be hi-hats but the 808 is the most prominent instrument it's the it's usually like the loudest or the most felt it's the most impactful mm -hmm. uh of the beat uh and then like you said followed by hi-hats right. so the 808 itself helps give trap uh, is definition and in terms of let's say hip hop as a whole, 808s aren't used that much. But it just is when you get down to trap, which I determined as a show, a sub genre. Right. 808s are used 99.999 percent of the time. But in hip hop as a whole, I would say 808s are used maybe 60 percent of the time. And they're like a lot, man. And it's not like maybe 808s less. just popped up. Like 808's been around forever, dog. It's 808's just... been around since Run DMC and even before, mm. bro. They used to it's use... Just... Go ahead. No, I was just saying it's just how they used it. Like, before it was like the accent. Like, if you listen to a lot of R&B songs, it'd be like a bass line and then it'd be like a boom. That was the 808. You know what I mean? It's just a Dog, different thought Jodeci. pattern of... Bro, yeah. exactly. Everybody. Um, I was told this. I don't... I've never checked this out or done it myself, but I was told that they would use a test tone signal from the board like uh whatever board was in the studio i want to say they'd say it was a 40 hertz test tone some some type of test tone and they would add pitch and add that to the song oh, to give it bottom because 808s weren't even though 808s were used back in the day like you know run mc ll cool j joe to see right. all those older uh joints they weren't played like they are now they were just kind of there to add some type of bottom to the song and they were so right. subtle and smooth you might not have even noticed them but if you were in a club and they weren't there the songs would sound very thin right. and bottomless so if you go back and just listen to certain like old school songs it's an eight in there it's in there oh yeah they there young london lewis what up bro yo what up what london, up shout out to london helps me out with a lot of uh sound design stuff hey hey i collab with a lot i shout know you my bro yeah, hey, shout you know, out, man. You know, young London. Let's yeah. see. Uh, what are you guys' uh, favorite key when it goes when you need inspiration? So, like, what's your go to key? D. Mine's is a young C minor. And C it, minor. And, and it's only because my I'm the most comfortable playing. It's not mm -hmm. that it's like the greatest key because I transpose all the time. <laughs> So it's really whatever key I need to be in, but I'm transposing. You know my favorite key to play in and my most comfortable key? It's a weird key. It's E flat. All right. E flat. I, e flat. I did, yeah. E flat major and C minor, same thing. I never understood. Oh, I didn't understand music theory, but somehow I knew all of those keys that went together and I would mm -hmm. play different things, but I didn't know anything about music theory. I never knew I was playing the E flat. Mm -hmm. I, I just never knew. Uh, it wasn't until years later that I knew, but yeah, I've been playing that forever. So that's my most, my uh, most comfortable key. Yeah. I think like C minor, one of my first mentors, K fam, he always played in C minor. Uh, and then AJ always played in E flat. So it's like, Oh, AJ played like, the E flat. <laughs> right. It, I can, I can guarantee you, if AJ play a beat, it's going to be in E flat, dog. Like, I can tell you all rip. Like, that's his go-to, bro. So, like, mm. that's why I end up just kind of going towards that because, you know, it was yeah. just what I, I knew. Let's yeah. see. Uh, someone says all black keys. You know, the Swiss beats. All black keys. Hey, we know somebody that do all white keys all the uh, time. Your I'm homie. Not. Your homie that I, that I had the opportunity of meeting. Wild oh, boy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
He definitely all white. Co- cocaine white, as he calls them. <laughs> Griselda Blanco. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> cocaine white. Yeah. A lot of those Swiss Beats records, though, they're all black keys. Oh, the black, yeah, all black keys. That's that's e- that's an easy easy move. I used mm-hmm. to do that for a minute. Then I start mixing a few uh, white keys in there, and then that's how I got to my uh, my E flat thing. Hey man, yeah, but you know, again, it's one of those things. I wouldn't just I transpose, Shotty. Like I do whatever I need to be in a situation because you know certain. I feel like certain keys give you certain moods and certain kind of vibes. So it's like. If I'm in a more pop mood, I'm going to go over here. If I'm in a more like r and I'm going to go over here. Yeah. So, you know, you just got to be cool with understanding what the, the mood calls for. It's not no one key fits all kind of thing. That is a fact. Um, here's an interesting question. It's, it's, it looks similar to a question we just had earlier. How do I mix my samples uh, with my drums to get that Griselda sound? Okay. Yeah, mm. lo-fi, heavily de- degraded <laughs> Turn audio. them joints down. <laughs> <laughs> Once Turn again, them joints all the way down. Um, in terms of how to, get your, how to get that sound, as far as the drum size, it goes, like I said to the other gentleman earlier, um, get familiar with breakbeats. You know, chop up some breakbeats, use some breakbeats. As far as like the degraded sound, there are a ton of lo-fi uh, or bit crushing type plugins you could get. One method I would suggest, though, is using, um, if you don't have any hardware, let's say you're using like a lo-fi uh, bit crushing type of plugin, I would put it to a subtle setting and then take whatever break beat I'm sampling, double the speed, sample it through the plugin, slow it back down. That's why I say use a subtle uh, preset on the plugin because whatever preset uh, whatever the preset sounds like is going to get greatly exaggerated when you slow right. it back down uh, through the sampling process. But um, that works well if you don't have any hardware. If you have hardware that colors your sound, oh, well, then you're really in for a treat. You use the same method, double double the speed of whatever you're sampling, run it through whatever you're sampling at whatever setting, slow it back down. And it's like always heaven. That... Right. um. You probably can't see it on, on Instagram. You can only see it a little bit on YouTube. But I have a uh, that Korg MS1 that I always talk about back there. That's great for that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I, I mean, I was joking about turning the drums down, but they mix their records to me like old rock records when I when I listen to them. Some of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With a, with a drum. A lot of times they'll use something that might be like only a sample and it has the drums in it. Exactly. And that's why the drums, yeah, and that's why the it drums just are like, like, they're just, the drums are so bad. That's why I was like, when I first heard it, I was like, this is weird. Like, I didn't get it. But then <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, I get it now. Like, it's a vibe. Yeah, yeah. We'll Shout see, to, uh, uh, Young Griselda. It said, Trisha, is your uh, background showing on Instagram or is it <laughs> just me? No, so on Instagram, I, I don't have anything to yeah, swap out green. the green screen. Young on green. YouTube, it's you know, I got a, a, a nice little design, nice little Ben Trapping up there, nice little Ben yeah, Trapping yeah. fire. But you know, Instagram, y'all get the green screen of luxury. Yep, Fact money up. green. Uh, they legend has it if you uh double tap the heart button that you get money, same color as this green. Mm. Legend has it. I say test it out. <laughs> I just made that up mm. off the spot. I say test it out. Uh, let's see. What's the best way to be heard as a producer? I feel like we answered this earlier. I'll just throw a real quick tip out there, not to spend too much time on this. Get an artist, man. Get an artist, put out a project. And um, but you, I guess you gotta get your marketing down as well. Yeah. You know, if you're gonna do that, you gotta get it out there in front of people. But if you want to present your sound as a complete package, get with an artist, do a complete project. Get with an artist that's as versatile as your sound is. And you'll have a great presentation, a EPK even. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We learned about that term on here last week. EPK, Boy, Potten. electronic press kit. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Talk to him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, all black keys. Okay, I'm behind in the chat. It's all good. It's all good. I know I'm behind. I know. I'm oh, behind. And one more thing that I would say about getting yourself out there that I feel like helped us. Mm-hmm. Is that we learned stuff from other businesses outside of music and applied it to music. Boy, did we. Like a lot of the stuff that we do is like stuff that came from 
real estate or drop shipping or something like that but we just flipped it to be about music and then so it's like we're like the few people that's doing those same kind of tactics so we stand out yep you know exactly but if you're doing if you're seeing everybody it's kind of like again i don't want to get back on that whole like no, let's do it thing. but if like you're hearing a song on the radio that song is probably old by the time you're hearing it you know what I'm saying? Like it's been recorded. So that style that you're hearing is already a few months old by the time you get to it. So if you're trying to copy that, then you're already behind. So if you're seeing certain stuff that you got to, that other people are implementing, chances are you're kind of behind. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, so it's like, behind. be looking at other industries to see like, all right, this person is doing this, this person's doing this in real estate and they're making, they're doing this from it. And then you just take it and say, how do I apply it to music? And then I feel like, you know, it'll definitely, it's like a little cheat code. Good point. Good point. Um, here's a question. Oh, has a question mark behind it. I'm going to read it and see if it is a question. <laughs> <laughs> what is everything outside there sounding sane? Okay. Uh, all right. All right. So this is, English might not be the first language. So let me try to translate. <laughs> why do you think every producer out there is sounding the same? Or why do you think uh, okay. all the beats out there are sounding the same? Um, we talked about this earlier in the show. It's a lot of uh, copy, copy what you see uh, being successful. And while you know people have done that, uh, done that forever. I think some people just take it too literally, and a lot of people don't know how to see what someone else is doing, assess their own situation, and then tailor what might be beneficial to their situation. That's right. what I think a lot of people fuck up. Because I think no, I agree. people are like, yo, I'm going to do exactly what this guy is doing. Even though this guy has a total different audience, total different sound, total different everything than you. People just, it's easier to just copy and paste and not have to think. Right. However, you do not get the best results. Um, they say no idea is original. Nothing new under the sun. I get it, but you got to know how to how to Fine. find things, pick the pick the best out of them, and then tailor it to what you have going on. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just I don't want to say laziness, but I think people are looking for the quick win. When to me in this music industry, nothing's a quick win. It's it's a it's a long grind that you got to be cool with. Like, all right, I'm gonna. I'm going to have to figure it out and work really hard to try to get to something, but the result will pay off, you know? Yeah. And I think, you know, understanding like, all right, I like this from this person, this from this person and putting them together and experimenting. That's how you create your own sound, but just copying the same patches that someone uses and the same drums and trying to make stuff. Yeah. You went in the short because you could probably sell a beat for somebody that's looking for that, but you're not branding yourself. No, so, not not yeah. at all. Um, here's a topic I want to talk about, and we're we're running out of time, so this is going to be one of our last topics. Um, I got a I put out a survey this morning. Shout out to everybody who filled out the survey uh, yesterday, rather, and I saw surprisingly more than three or four times when I asked people what they struggle with, a lot of people said um, sound selection, and then two people were actually nice enough to go in depth and say. I, I want to know what sounds go together to make a track. And I thought that that was really smart thinking. You're trying to formulate right. a little something. So as a, as a blueprint, I kind of get what you were doing there. And my advice to you would be to analyze um, the sound selections of songs that you like. They could be modern songs. They could be older songs. Mm -hmm. And to just notice like, okay, what is this? Piano, bells, um, acoustic bass, roads. You know what I'm saying? Or right. it's a pad and this type of kick, this type of snare, this type of such and such. And start writing it down or remember if your memory is good right. enough, certain sound combinations that go well together. And once again, you don't have to mimic those very same sound combinations, but it, you know, if there is a acoustic bass and a high piano, right. that maybe an electric bass and a bell sound might right. also be the equivalent of that. You know what I'm saying? So 
analyze the sound selections and sound combinations of songs that you like newer or older and that will give you a quick uh at least go to or springboard for sound combinations to use for certain tracks that you're using that you know what made me so what you're to me what you're saying is is look at the frequencies right the frequency ranges because like so when we did the music producer mindset right uh so we're teaching like how to make beats and all that to me, one of the things that I had to like break down that I didn't understand how to tell somebody was certain stuff live in certain frequency ranges. So your low end is over here, then you Mm -hmm. got your low mid, then you got your, you know, and so everything needs to have something there. So I think once people start understanding that like a piano covers this, but also pads kind of cover those same frequencies and also guitars, if you play it in this octave plays the same. So once you start understanding that in this frequency range, I need to get this covered. All right, cool. That's, I could use these instruments. And then at the high ends, like, oh, bells play over here, or I could play a high octave piano, or, you know, Mm -hmm. once you start thinking of like, these pieces need to be covered for, like, if you think of a band, like it's the guitar player, it's the keyboard player, you know what I mean? Like uh, the bass, you know, like they cover certain spectrums of the frequency. So once you figure that out, I think it makes it a lot easier of just like understanding. But you know, think of stuff that's already out there that complements each other. Thanks. <laughs> um, all right, man. We are running out of time. We have about two and a half minutes left. You know what I didn't do? I did not give my review of my new monitors. Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I'm trash for doing this, but I'll I'll at least uh tell what I think about them in this in this last uh minute and then we'll get into some other stuff. Um, I got the Personas uh, Eris, E-R-I-S, E-8-X-T. I told the story about how my KRKs went out, my uh, engineer shot the Realistic Productions. Uh, yeah, he suggested these monitors. I think they're great. In short, if you want to know more about it, uh, DM me. But they are powerful, but they are also flat. They are crazy adjustable mm-hmm. as far as the frequencies and stuff that you could adjust in the back, as well as the gain. It even has a switch. Uh for the, the size space that you're in. So, so oh, they sound fine. better and different. They are highly customizable coming from the KRKs, which I love, which I use for about 12 or 13 years. Not even gonna lie to you. Um, I'm not mad at this, bro. I'm actually happy with the uh, with what I got. And also they they were very cheap. I got them for 520 for the pair. For the pair. Oh, that's, oh, that's and fire. I was told they sound just as good as studio, uh, studio monitors that are priced two or three times mm-hmm. higher than this. And I can believe it. I can believe it. Um, so saying all that to say, we have about one minute. I was going to plug, uh, you know, our latest venture, unless you got something no, else to say go. real quick. All right, man. Listen, in case you have not done so yet, damn it, man. What's wrong with you? Ben Trapping 5. <laughs> it has been out. Um, it's been out for about a week, maybe a week and a half. People are going crazy over it. Uh, check out our stories. You'll see what producers have been doing with it. Ben Trapping 5, the ultimate trap kit. Drums, yes, melodies, MIDI, stems. Uh, brought, brought to you by two people that have had chart-topping songs. So we kind of know what we're doing a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We've we, we done a little bit. So hit up soundover.net. Hit up the producerkit.com to check out what's inside. Check out the overview video. Listen, it's a lot of people out here doing it. There's very few people out here doing it well, and I'll leave it at that. Thanks okay. again. For listening to another episode or watching another episode of Unquantized Podcast. Sure. Uh, we will see you next week. If, also, if you have any questions uh, for the show next week, don't hesitate to DM myself or Trizza. Let's go. Erb, what up, bro? Erb, what up? All right, man, we out.